And there are far better shapers than me. There's a thousand better shapers than me around. Um, I've never been super good with the tools, you know. I've got better as I got older. And I can swing an electric planer around quite well. But, you know, if I was to go start building a house, the chippies would sack me pretty quick. So, no, I'm definitely a designer. In surfboard design, there are 50 or 100 possible elements and they're all floating around in the ether. And when you do a custom board, you've got to pull those elements down and put them into the foam. And that's what I love doing. And I love the big changes not just little tiny micro modifications, they bore me. I like big changes in a board, in surfboard design. I had a conversation with Bob in the 90s. He was right there with me. Uh, he was, I was going, yeah, I came off the bottom and then I, and, and, and I just hooked it right in. And as I was explaining it, he was just going, I'll never forget his face. So I was like, Buddy. I was thinking about it, I was like, he's right there with me on the way. He's off the bottom with me. He's under the lip with me. He's traveling through that tube with me. He's right there and he was just like, he was just getting it. And I was like, oh man. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. He's, uh, like, he doesn't stop. Well, he's had two knees, two hips. So he's like the little bionic man, you know? He just keeps on charging around. Loves a surf. Yeah, he's, he's an inspiration, really. He's just not cynical, he doesn't, it's not like, oh, I was better in the 60s, oh, it's too crowded now. It's, it just doesn't think that way. It's, it's all future and it's all positivity. And I think that's why it's such an attractive person. People end up just falling off <laughs> every word he says. My fascination with surfboards started from the moment that I could paddle out past the break, past the body surfing break, and be out to sea and be able to choose the swell I wanted. And then the first time I stood up and took a drop, planing down the surface, I went, this is it. I'm doing this forever. One night um, in Brisbane, my dad took me around to visit a guy who was doing repairs on 16-foot cubby boards, 16-foot plywood boards. And I walked under his house and he had racks of them, all varnished and these beautiful forms, you know, these big wooden 16 foot forms. And I was probably 12 or 13. And Dad went, oh man, this guy makes these things. This is what I want to do. This is what I've got to do. I've got to get into making these things. So that got me from age 13. I hitchhiked to Sydney and walked into Reg McDonough's surfboard factory, which is where where Ingham Hall is now. And he said, can you shape? I said, yeah, you bet I can. So he gave me a flaming vibrator sander and a blank, he said, go to it. And me, like a mug, I'm trying to push this vibrator, <laughs> vibrator sander on a blank, doing nothing. And he came out joking and said, I don't think you're a shaper. No, I'm not. So I walked around to Scotty Dillon's, got myself a job as a sander. So at 17, I, in 1961, I started sanding and within six months I was a shaper. We'd always down tools whenever the swell was up. Come on, we're all going surfing. We'd shut the shop and go surfing. We were making, this is no, serious, 24 boards a day. It was fierce. Everyone wanted to get onto the surfing craze. And then you know, Midget won the world contest in 64. The whole thing just kept rolling. Australia's the chest beating with the heroes of this sport, you know. While everyone was headed towards longer boards, McTavish was quietly building shorter, more manoeuvrable ones. The McTavish plastic machine is a product of Bob's dedication to performance. It brings the surfer closer than ever before to the full expression of his personality. In 67, when the shortboard revolution commenced, it was Midget and I were he was working at Palm Beach and I was working in Brookvale and uh, in the afternoons I'd drive out to have a surf, wash off the foam dust and resin at Palm Beach or Avalon and Midget would be there on his latest and I'd have my latest and we were, we'd, basically in six months we went from nine foot six down to seven foot six and that was the biggest change ever. But 
The hardest part was throwing away the slavery to the Californian lead because all the American surf magazines would were teaching us the style and what, how it went and the technique. So, and all the stars, you know, from Phil Edwards through Nicky Dora, you know, they were setting the template for performance. Skip, Mickey and McTavish got together. We were going back to the States in the morning and McTavish wanted to make sure that we fully understood the new concepts before we left. Well, yeah, the whole idea of that board was, as you said, was to increase maneuverability while still maintaining speed from an old board. Uh, the idea of increasing maneuverability means you can get into positions that you can get more speed. You know, so overall you're going to get more from the wave. Many things. Putting the board into the wave and getting it... Yeah, by maneuverability. Yeah. By having really good maneuverability, you can place it in more advantageous spots. You see a power pocket sitting up on the top of the wave and you say, OK, get up there and get that power. You just go, phew, well, and sit up in there. Pick your own track. Yeah, sure, right, pick right, your own right. track. He really pushed the generation at the time. And really, it was, you know, I mean, he was involved, like cutting things up and shaving things off and then, you know, reorganising and just really involved from the get-go, really. And I can feel his spirit today when I get to talk with him one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. He's just so alive and I can't imagine the kind of person he was back in the day. We were making boards for where we were surfing, especially the involvement school at Noosa, and that reflected down through the rest of the Australian industry. So guys in Bondi were writing our Noosa design boards, which is technically not spot on. But we didn't know any better, really. The, the customers didn't know any better. But us guys at Noosa were refining this thing and getting it tweakier and responding quickly. We had open, empty point waves to develop the short board on. So from 68 to 71, just the hottest period of design. really contemporary today. Uh, he's still catering to a broader community of surfers who love riding stylish, um, beautiful pieces of equipment. Hey Nick, oh, good to see you champ. You too, mate. Good, man. How Real good. good, Real good, yeah. Awesome, awesome, yeah. looking well. Yeah, for an old fart. Right. Oh, <laughs> two I'm hips and two good. knees. Yeah, yeah. But still surfing. Yeah. yeah. Always, Regularly, yeah. Yeah, good stuff, good yeah. stuff. I was just showing the crazy board I was riding. This is, um, it, this was 1967, we made the plastic machine. Oh, yeah, yeah. The I remember you telling me uh, this whole story. Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, this is uh, this one works. No way. <laughs> you finally figured it out. <laughs> yeah. It took 50 years, but no we got way. it right. That's all time. Yeah. Man. Making a board for Mick's going to be really exciting because you've got one of the world's greatest surfers, um, but he's got a full back foot style, used to driving off three fins and double concos. So he, he can blast out of the pocket and put himself up into the slot, you know, like, like no one else. Come from behind tons of white water and blast through and he uses that back foot and the tail so well. Whereas the board I'm going to make him is the classic 70s, which was pretty gutless in the tail. And the speed came from flow down the line. And you had to use the back of the board to position yourself in the slot, then shuffle forward to get the speed from the, the wider nose area. Um, so it's totally different from what Mick surfed before, but what a fascinating combination. I usually cut just outside the line, you know, yeah. on it, but on the outside of yeah. it. Just gives you enough time to just do a little bit of work yeah. on it. But when, when Brewer was shaping these, I was in his shaping room in Hawaii, and he cut them out like a half inch, you know, like a, almost a centimetre oversized. Yeah, right. And you get the electric plane and he'd plane it back. Yeah. And then, oh, blow that. Yeah. Cut on the <laughs> line. Work. Yeah. That shape has been really closely identified with me through my career of 60 years. That was a, a big highlight in the 70s, getting the first sh commercially successful shortboard into the marketplace. and it's, Work for so many people, so many good surfers learnt on that board back in the 70s. There's no board like it in a modern realm, you know, that, have, that can get away with a rail that solid. It's crazy, isn't it? a flat deck, so there's three inches of foam right there, you know. Yeah, it's sort of something that's sort of starting to come back a little bit more where everyone's going real thick up front and, and blading out the tail. Wow. 
Yeah. Yeah, especially like the, the guys like paddling jaws and stuff like that. Oh, jaws, yeah, yeah. big waves, yeah, yeah. No, I'm a full believer in meet up front. For me. Yeah. I think the trouble is with jaws, they don't use enough tail rocker. Yeah, right. He kind of was always on about getting rocker right, especially tail rocker. And he was like, don't worry too much about the front. It's all in the back. That's the part that fits in the water. So concentrate on your tail rocker. That's the part that's fitting in the curve. Surfboards are amazing little vessels that are traveling in increasing spirals. And so to develop the wings, the fins, and the foils and the rockers and the bottom shapes to work in those tight curves is really a wonderful dynamic of design. And it's constantly intriguing and you're constantly learning. Even at my age, there's still new stuff. Okay, mate, have a feel of this. So pure 72. That is, <laughs> that is incredible. I love shaping the board for Mick because he's Mick. And he's not under, no longer under the stress of competition. So he's now relaxed and his mind can wander where he likes with surfing. Thank you so oh, much. I'm stoked, bud. Oh, thanks. Champ. Yeah, no, thank I'm you. Like, but, no, I don't worry about that. <laughs> I'll just take it home and put it in a cup. <laughs> I've got my eye on the highway. I've got my boat set to sail. I've got my feet in the water and it's cold. I've got my hammer on the nail When I was a boy in New York City I thought I'd ride the world with my thumb The drinks would be cold, the girls pretty I'd play a tune that everyone could hum From debutantes to laborers and bums I surf two or three times a week. I'm onto the pulse of what's going on at all the breaks. I'm not addicted the way I used to be. Up until the 80s, I was a full surf addict and I had to get wet constantly. I was kind of forced not to. I had to make a living, but I still love it. And, but I, I still take experimental boards in the water. Every time I go out, I'm riding something with a variation. And this is the way it is. Bob's a, 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 you know, had an enormous influence um, on, on uh, the surfboard design, riding his own equipment and then, and then shaping boards for everyone else. And, you know, I mean, I, it's a fantastic pick. What he did and what he's still doing and still checking the waves every day and, and into it. And, I, and I, that's why I picked him. I thought he would. He's still in the room, he's still going back there going, I got a new idea, you know, and I, I'm, man, I love that. I love surfboards, I love surfing, I love the shapes, I love the dynamics of surfboards going through the water. Every board I shape, I still visualise the board in the water, and that's what keeps you going, is it, you're surfing in your mind when you're shaping. Someone once said, you know, there's soul in some surfboards, and I go, yeah, there's no such thing. But now I see where the soul is, it's when the shaper is, is visualising the board passing through the water. I'm pleased to be uh, recognised as a, um, a lead and long time shaper, that's good. After doing it for 60 years, yeah, it, you just do it because you love it. It's, it doesn't matter really what accolades you get or what you don't, it doesn't matter. It's, um, you're here still the next day shaping and it just goes on and on.